Hi there, welcome to the Noah Presgrove case. So I've got some bad news to share with you in regards to the case and more so my channel. I'm going to be giving a summary first of all, so you get an idea of things quick, and then I'll elaborate onwards if you wish to stick around. And we can also take a look at the comment section from last night's videos amongst the conversation discussions of Caden Pressey's leaked timeline and the importance behind it because there are some inconsistencies with the partners in true crime one welcome to anyone that is currently here in this live premiere i'll acknowledge all that in just a bit but first of all let's get straight to the point so from the looks of it it appears that warlight ref myself has been blocked banned restricted whatever you want to call it on one of the no presgrove facebook groups and I believe it's the one called Noah Presgrove Case Discussion Group. It's actually one which is private. Um, I think it always has been. I only joined it probably some weeks ago now because when I first started off for, you know, for most of the months, it's been on the Army page or the Reddit page. They've been very helpful and it's worked out good. and come across some key individuals too. I do want to say as a heads up, there's no guarantee that I will be on the army page. At the moment, it seems okay, but you never know. There can always be a chain reaction, but if it happens, it is what it is. So yes, the case discussion page, group, whatever you want to call it, I've been kicked off, blocked, whatever. How would I know them? Well, signed him, tried searching for the name of the group. It did not show up whatsoever. To be fair, I had this same exact issue in the past before I even joined the group. So that's questionable in itself, isn't it? But in the past, before I was either fully aware of the group, before even joining it, before any trouble, I, was ju I just couldn't find the page. So was I blocked back then, even before I joined? I don't know, unless it's just Facebook being dodgy. Did come across it in the end, a day or two later, but still, weird. But as of recently, tried searching, did not find it whatsoever. I signed out. I went online, Google, typed in the name of the Facebook page. It does exist. It's still there. You click on the link. It takes you to the page, and it will say private join group. But in order to do so, you need an account. And to follow through with that, you got to sign in to Facebook to access everything, whether you are part of the group yet or not. Upon signing in on that request, as soon as it's done so, it comes up with a message and a padlock saying, this content can't be viewed at the moment, either because it's been deleted, which likely isn't the case. There'd be no reason to delete that group or page, or it's been adjusted or restricted in some way. Now, some people said on Facebook you can restrict profiles to only close friends, those that follow you. Maybe the same with groups, but because I was a part of the group physically joining, you have to join the page to view the contents within it, On right? And obviously, with not being able to view it now, clearly something's happened. Now, some people could be scratching their head thinking, what has Warlight Ref done to deserve that? And I'm just simply going to explain it right now. Because the only thing I can think of, based off the timing and how fast it all came about, would have to be from last night. And for those that aren't quite familiar with it, be sure to check the video out. Top right corner of the screen, you'll see an eye symbol. Hover over it, click on it, and then you'll find the link with the playlist of all the videos I've done on the case, but also the video from last night. Whereas last night, the main focus and theme was Caden Pressey's timeline, the June one, the July one, comparing it to check for inconsistencies. It was very important. But at the end of the video, I did an add-on, which was separate, to do with me defending myself, as I do on a basic, repetitive format, specifically to defend myself, my credibility, my channel, because it can have lasting effects if things go wrong, backfire, or get out there, and it's taken out proportion. So I tried doing it in a controlled way. I tried using appropriate language. I even gave the odd heads up as well, because I thought, I hope there's no misunderstandings, and it still wasn't good enough. There's only so much I can do, right? And I felt that I was very lenient at the time because I took 
many factors into consideration, but still, it wasn't enough. So it obviously led to some disgruntled humans who may or may not of, you know, take action themselves, taken action, or reached out to someone else. I'm just, you know, it just seems like a bit of a coincidence how you got last night some disgruntled reactions, and then today, oh, suddenly I can't find the page anymore. And it just so happens that those said individuals are also on that page too. So it seems a little bit obvious, but it is what it is. The difference which separates me from most humans out there is whilst well, this video is being done right now, this is just to spread awareness as in what's going on so all the viewers know because, you know, these different pages out there can be, can be of great value at times. Maybe sometimes there's a downfall and there's a bit of BS here and there and some dodgy people present, but it has been useful when learning about the case, maybe finding some screenshots, photos which haven't been seen before, or reposting key things which need to be looked into. It's been helpful. Same with the Reddit page, but I guess along the way some doors have closed, as in just recent time. So because of that, does it actually impact my channel such as when covering the case. Well, it does limit, it does restrict what one can possibly talk about and cover. So you could see a possible decrease in consistent coverage on this case. And I know for maybe a few people that would sound quite disappointing, right? Because you wanna keep the case alive, spread the awareness, learn more and more with time, but, you know, the doors are shut in my face. There's not much I can do about it. And I'm not going to protest onwards like others would, wailing banshees, etc. People have made a decision because they feel it's the best one. They've done what they've needed to do. As for me as an individual, I don't just suddenly fall into a dark abyss and I'm completely lost. That's the importance of YouTube and being a YouTuber, an established YouTuber with some very key individuals that have supported along the way and as well, even bigger, more successful established channels out there that have either given tips, that have helped, the odd positive message, shared interest along the way, such as Stephanie Harlow, commenting on this channel to do with the No Presgrove case, bedtime crime stories as well, and even um, Cavan related but still on the channel, exploring abandoned mines in unusual places. These are key individuals that, you know, have been positive, vice versa, it's all good. Along the way, when it comes to other humans out there disgruntled, they do what they need to do, statistically, some may walk away. It's happened within the Dylan Rounds case. Not to sound rude, but at times certain humans can be easily replaced. That's all I'm saying. When it comes to covering a case, you'll get a boost in subscribers because you're getting involved in something new and people are coming across you for the first time. And then if you stick with that case, it will slow down. That's why Maybe bigger channels may cover multiple different cases because one, you know, for that growth, constant growth, and two, maybe it's just because it's easier for them to cover multiple cases because they might not be able to go as deep or they might not have as much time or they might not see things the same way so it doesn't open as much, you know, possibilities. But either way, if I lost one to 200 people over time, I mean, this is not a Zav girl situation where autopsy photos of a young individual are leaked or revealed on a paywall site such as Patreon. So come on, it's not complete assassination of character. But what I'm getting at is if people did walk away, maybe sometime next week or two, if I did a different video, maybe a different case or something hard hitting elsewhere, I'd probably get like about 500, 1,000 plus back or new. So as... Some walk away, I gain more. And when I say gain, that just means the presence of more or new people. 
So it's not a major negative or downfall. And to refer back to some key channels, exploring abandoned mines and unusual places, key person on this channel, good individual, over 400,000 subscribers, established, I think over 42 million channel views, very good. And as well, interest within the Kenny Beach case, great crossover, good videos, atmosphere too. Then you got Stephanie Harlow, was it 900,000 plus subscribers commenting on this channel? Their interest within the Noah Presgrove case, that's good to see, considering that the Noah Presgrove case isn't the most popular one out there, considering. And then even Bedtime Crime Stories, over 42,000 subscribers and going along the way and growing. That's positive, you know? It's just like, maybe not applying it right now in the moment, but in the past and with other cases, Key individuals along the way, if they, you know, give the thumbs up or some kind of positivity, that's what matters. Just like how in the past with certain families or family members where they've said, oh, thank you for covering this case and doing what you do, it's helpful. That's what you want to hear. That's what you want to see. It's good. It's positive. If some random stranger or disgruntled person who's easily triggerable um, or triggered, um, overreacts, whatever, it happens. Right. So to dial it back to the Noah Presgrove case, whilst a group may have kicked me out, and you never know, others might along the way, it is what it is, I'm not going to protest. I just wanted to give a little heads up in case people thought I was going silent, right? That is important in itself, because before I get to that, actually, I just want to elaborate a little bit more in case people didn't quite understand. We're going to look at the comment section anyway, but it's important to do it. So it's not one sided. So if people still don't quite understand why I may or may supposedly have been kicked from a page, has it got anything to do with the Noah Presgrove case? No. So does that make it a petty reason then? You could interpret it that way. I said last night with how I defended myself, with how I presented some material and I put it into perspective, other people felt betrayed by it and a form of trust broken. And with ongoing events with other people, previously I can understand why it would have a knock-on effect and why it would hit people hard. But regardless of who a human is, if I'm going to defend myself, I'm going to defend myself. It's as simple as that. The pattern that I've noticed, the first time round I was kicked from a page was on Reddit and it was like some other Reddit group. Not the main one. I know who they are, good individual. But another Reddit page, right? To do with no press growth. And the reason why I got kicked, banned, whatever, from there is because basically I defended myself against drama when serious points and false claims were made about me. And the actual video that I did defending myself and responding back to the problematic individual or individuals was done on my own channel on a completely different platform which didn't have much to do with the Reddit page directly, right? So I took the trouble and I diverted it elsewhere away from the main place and I defended myself. That was very good of me to do instead of just plastering it on the page where it's all happening. I did it in my own space and got on with it. But no, not allowed to defend myself. So I got kicked from the page. Was it a major loss? Nope. It was, it was becoming a bit flat anyway. Well, just like JJ's ass. <laughs> Not the real one, of course. But in terms of recent time, some way or another, defending myself again, even if it's against even if it's against an opinion, I was stating a fact and I was doing a comparison. And I was also countering some additional points, but that didn't seem to be acknowledged. Um, like, you know, claims in the background about, oh, this was said, that was said about me behind my back. And I just simply said in the video, well, I don't see the proof of it, okay? So whilst I'm defending myself against a particular individual, I'm also defending them. That is me going above and beyond the call of duty. Where's the Victoria Cross at? Where's the purple medal or something? I don't know what you call it over there in the US, right? 
That's what you call levels above. That's what you call full on balance. And becoming the black sheep, that's the true you know, definition of being balanced. I am now the black sheep. It is what it is. Happened before, happens again. Oh well. But still, from the perspective of the uh, other humans, they may feel that the trouble or the potential trouble isn't because of the case, but it could harm the case. So it's best, let's cut our ties. Let's push Warlike Ref away. We don't need someone like him present if he's doing this and that, because it feels behind our back. It feels backstabbing. It, it could harm and implicate the case. Now, in terms of selling myself, it doesn't sound too good that, how I'm talking about myself, but this is what I mean. I'm covering multiple perspectives from other people on how they could perceive me now compared to back then. And what's happened in between has caused their opinions and thoughts to transition over to a more negative outlook. And if they feel that there is a negative presence around, such as on the page, then you need to cleanse it and get rid, which is throw me away. So there we go. That's pretty much it. In terms of recent time, um, I've not really used the discussion page too much, but it has been a useful page for the time it served whilst it was, you know, um, available. But in terms of, you know, video ideas and coverage, there's still ideas to look into and to take in mind. I said there's only so much you can do anyway within a case like this, but... As a heads up, if anything does slow down, that's only because there's less opportunities now. It is what it is. Now to refer back to the importance of why I've talked about it in mainly a calm, formal way. And that's because look at the pattern with time. Jan Friarillo, that female who created offers to get people to talk, to reach out put offers online, adverts on Facebook, posters, leaflets in public. And then before the deadline of what, 15th of August, days before, it was taken down unexpectedly. And then they went silent. Then later, they did a, an update, not really explaining much, but saying not much can be, really be talked about. Cav hinting that maybe something did happen or maybe it didn't. So Cav went flat. But that was one of the individuals to have gone quiet. And it wasn't the first, because then you had like the situation with Justin Roy, who's kind of quietened down a little bit. That could be by personal choice, but at the time it was like, well, what's really going on? I mean, is it because of stuff in the background? Is it because of the drama online? Finding out too much, right? Trying to interpret it, it was just like the presence going a bit quiet. Then you had partners in true crime that definitely went quiet publicly. I mean, they, they might be working on it in the background, but you know, how they said, they're stepping back publicly, no more videos at the moment, whilst to try and deal with material and possible evidence in the background. So that came across as a bit of a shock or surprise to some people. Was there anyone else in between that has gone quiet? I don't know, you can leave some bullet points down below. You could say as a whole, maybe some general public people that may have been blocked, silenced from certain pages. Do I feel like I'm one of them? No, because I'm not exactly just a person, because I'm a YouTuber, a creator, a catalyst behind spreading awareness on cases. Close to 15,000 subscribers, over 6 million total channel views on my channel, I've starred in a Paramount Plus documentary, even though it wasn't for the right reasons, because they slandered my name and I did clear it up on my own channel, but still I starred in a Paramount Plus documentary. Some third party people from Warner Brothers as well supposedly reached out to me in the past, tried stabbing me in the back, doing things behind my back, didn't work. And then, um, well, before that, some music which I created on my channel was used in a small scale short Indian film on YouTube, all documented there, positive to see. And even my nature footage 
was actually used in a theatre group somewhere in Japan. They actually reached out to me via email in the past. So a lot's happened with time, a lot of good things. Um, and for once, you could say some of the good things are greater in value than the negative stuff. You can say there's more negative than good, but as long as the good is just as impactful, if not greater than the negatives, then it can just like outshine it in a good way. And for once in life, it actually applies to me, such as with YouTube. So it's not the end of the world. But, you know, some people could be thinking, is Warlight Wrath going quiet? Is Warlight Wrath being paid off? Has Warlight Wrath been silenced by someone to keep quiet, just like Jan Friarillo, just like Partners in True Crime and anyone else in between? You see how the theories and the ideas can rush about. That is not the case. I've just simply been kicked from a page because of unrelated reasons, which aren't to do with the case, but more so petty reasons but people have their reasons and it is what it is. Okay, so hopefully that clears that up. I do have my own video ideas, which I still need to get round to doing in whatever order. I don't think it really matters. I do need to get my head around the Caden Pressy timeline. I might even possibly restructure it because it was a little bit cluttered, even though it was organised just because there was so much text on the screen unless I spread it out a little bit. I'd rather just focus in on this private timeline or once private timeline and then see where we go from that. Will there be any more chain reactions? Who knows? But I know I might have mentioned it before but I'll probably just mention it again. Let me just get some water. Is there any form of one rule for one, one rule for another when it comes to some situations? You could argue that because this is just like a general point. Let's just say you got an individual that spreads misinformation about the No Presgrove case. They state things as a fact, but they don't provide any evidence. The scene is potentially suspicious and hurtful, damaging towards the case and the investigation. That sounds pretty serious. Then you got Warlight Raph that simply defends himself against a message in the background and brings it to light, just to clear oneself and to make comparisons. Okay, people may feel uncomfortable, people may feel betrayed, people may think that could then link on with the No Presgrave case. But Who's more damaging towards the case itself? An individual that spreads misinformation, gets people's hopes up, and then it goes downhill, doesn't provide any evidence, and does it over and over again, and never learns their lesson, and they never seem to get punished. And then Warlight Raph does one thing, and is instantly assassinated. It seems a little bit one-sided, doesn't it? Hmm? you got an individual that spreads a lot of misinformation and then you've got a person that can spread a lot of awareness. And who's silenced? Me. Right. And when I refer to you've got an individual, a person that can spread misinformation or can be a bit reckless at times with how they type, I'm being very vague with names, but if you wanted to be a bit more specific, what about that individual called Dina Rose? Because supposedly more and more people have caught on to her from the last time I checked, some days ago, and we're then suspicious of her. But, oh, what happens the day or two later? Supposedly, they're supposed to be kicked from the discussion page because of their misinformation and their uh, revealing details, which wasn't all true. They were still there, they weren't kicked, and they're still posting, and now a range of people are being all positive towards her again. This reminds me of the Dylan Rounds case YouTube streets where you've got different sets of people and they've got like a goldfish mentality and a little bit selective tunnel vision, bit of an obtuse mindset. That's how it comes across, if I'd be honest with you. It's like one rule for one, one rule for another. And in terms of other situations where you might have bad people or those within the case who are given the red carpet treatment despite what they may have done to Noah Presgrove. 
hmm, maybe the exceptions would be treat them like a king or a queen, accommodate them so you can keep your enemies closer and you can keep tabs on them to see what they do or say, to get information out of them. It is a strategy, I understand that. An individual that has no real linkage to the case can be tossed aside, I get that, more easily. Hmm. Anyway, I think what we should do is just pause for a second and head on over to the YouTube comment section with the videos from last night and see what people had to say. What I'll just do is set it to the newest and we start from the bottom and then we work our way up, okay? First of all, a person called William Galloway, welcome to the channel, also if he is intoxicated. What's that in relation to? Caden Pressy, I'm guessing, about what point? Juni, as they all seem to be. Well, that's the thing, all are intoxicated, the party goers, and yet it was Carter Combs described as the designated driver. I mean, out of the 40 people that were at the party, whether that be Friday and Saturday, or just Sunday only, depending on which timeline you go off from how Ken Pressy described things, out of the 40 people in total, how many were intoxicated? 39, 38, or less? I'd like to know. Now, Skeptical says, ooh, another perfect timeline, ref. I appreciate that, Skeptical. No doubt, at work, I'll catch up later. Take your time. Do you know about the SB Vegas Adventures Kenny Veach update? So I think I may have seen that somewhere else on a different platform as like a little heads up and had a quick check of it earlier. And yeah, very good, especially when you come across items, material along the way. Some people could say, well, it's hard to believe. How did it end up there? And how was it not noticed earlier? Who knows? It could even be more recent stuff from somebody else, but it's still a mystery. Whose items do they belong to? Could it be Kenny's, etc.? To be honest, I probably do need to do some videos on the Kenny Veach case, but, you know, I can't just abandon the Noah Presgrove case. It's it's kind of difficult because, you know, both cases are completely different. One's true crime, or supposedly. The other one is more so just a missing person cold case, but they're both interesting individually. Um, you know, I've got to say, some people are very, very patient, you know, when it comes to waiting for updates on the Kenny Veach case. I don't know if I, if I can do it consistently. I do remember some months ago, I was supposed to be starting again on Kenny Beach. And I, I think I did it for like a week or so. I was almost doing it every single day. And then, I don't know, something happened. I'd, I'm not too sure if there was like another event or a new case, which I went on to. But I'll need to do something about it. Jeannie says, I started but not going to watch random agave burn. We'll check later. Uh, okay, whatever that means. But I'll try and sort it out. Now, Kay says, In Caden Pressy's leaked interview, I found it super strange when Caden mixed up his days. How do you not remember being at the party Friday? He remembers Saturday to Monday perfectly, but forgot Friday. Something ain't right with Caden. What I will say in defence of Caden... What didn't help in that situation is that the police guy, one of them, ended up kind of forcing Caden to agree that, yeah, probably you did attend on Friday. You know, other people did, so you probably did as well. The police guy should not be in that position to be telling Caden what to say and what not. That's, like, unnatural. It's, like, forcing it to, to ruin the, like, eyewitness accounts. But for Caden, just in general, to, like, say, oh, yeah, I went there Friday... But and then kind of reconfirm it later. And yet in partners in true crime, he's confident that he came down on Saturday. No mention to Friday. But you know what else is interesting, Kay? Is that in the Partners in True Crime interview, Caden Pressy said early on in the interview that he didn't want to talk about Friday. Interesting. Why did he not want to talk about Friday? But he talked about Friday in the private interview. Oh, well, it's common sense. It's because Friday could be very important. Or maybe it's not that important. Well, either way, well, if it's not important to talk about publicly because it's not relevant, then why did Caden bring it up in the private interview with the actual authorities then? If it's not that significant, if it's not relevant to him, why did he mention it then? 
Why did he say he went down to the party on the Friday? He remembers being down there on a Friday. Is that down to memory loss and getting mixed up between the days? Because Friday is different to Saturday. And one of the obvious ones is the actual spelling of the days. But more importantly, a critical difference is one's the weekend or the beginning of it. And then the other is the end of a like a like a week day of if people going to school or people going to work. So it should be fairly obvious, but who knows what was going on there. But nevertheless, okay, Caden brought it up about Friday in the private interview. Were any key details really mentioned? Not really. The only bit that made my eyes widen a bit was the amount of people that were present there Friday and Saturday. 40 party goers. And yet Cade and Pressy was referring to how it was Sunday when all the people came on down, where it really kicked off the party, the 40 people, the strangers. So that's kind of weird, isn't it? Either way, out of the party footage, what we've seen, we've not seen 40 people at the party all at once. Anyway, let me just refer back to what Kay's, you know, adding on. So also... Also, he described Sunday night perfectly. His story matched the Partners in True Crime podcast. But he said Colton and two others were talking, taking all the beer Sunday night and said, oh wait, got my days mixed up after the cop corrected him. I think Caden accidentally slipped up and Colton along with those two kids with their Sunday night and killed Noah was weird to me. Yeah, like, when I heard it at the time, I heard the reference, oh, it was Sunday night, but then also heard the reference Monday. And because people in the case refer to Monday as in Sunday night, it gets very confusing. For me, it does. Kay says, was weird to me, plus Caden refused to talk about Friday night on Partners in True Crime. Exactly, right? Maybe something happened Friday with Colton and Noah, or anyone else in between. Who knows at this point? I mean, from the party footage, Noah was okay up until at least Monday, 1.30 in the morning because of Noah getting slapped by Brylan. Noah appeared to be okay. The next timestamp of supposed video footage described by Caden, who saw it at a later point, 2.40 in the morning, side-by-side rollover, Noah with a bloodied nose. At 2.40, Caden would have been asleep. Two minutes later, though, Caden would have woken up to the phone call by Alicia Lee. So, did Caden not see or hear anything to do with the rollover, even though it was two minutes after it happened, supposedly? That's what I find interesting. And those two minutes passing by to waking up to not knowing what's just happened, and then it taking, uh, what, 20, 30 minutes to drift back off to sleep. And in that space of time... Nothing happened, nothing was heard or witnessed. How long does it take for a a side-by-side rollover to be rectified and then for Noah to walk on in to have a shower? That's what I find very, very interesting. And I want to know, anyone and everyone watching in the chat right now, what do you think about Caden in the Partners in True Crime interview where Caden said, I can't talk or I don't want to talk about Friday? And yet in the private interview, he did talk about Friday. But really, what was mentioned wasn't that big of a deal, in my opinion. Because most of the key details which were revealed were going to Sunday night, more so Monday morning. So if it wasn't that significant or that big of a deal as in Friday, then really it should have been brought up in the Partners in True Crime interview, in my opinion. Now Jade says... I've always been a little bit suspicious of Caden Pressy, but I would understand why he would get his days mixed up like that. He had been drinking, and the time of the interview with the police had been nine months since the party, so he's not to remember everything. But you know what's interesting, Jade? There are details that Caden remembers and acknowledges in the private interview, which he doesn't acknowledge in the public interview with partners in true crime which you'd probably expect but then furthermore there are details and certain timestamps and additional stuff that was actually talked about in the partners in true crime interview which wasn't actually mentioned in the private one right that's what's a bit weird if you want to 
try and be lenient. You could say, well, maybe in one interview, Caden remembers some stuff, forgets the other, and then vice versa a month later. Maybe it can happen, but it's still worth talking about, isn't it? Nate says, Caden's not a killer. At the very worst, he's withholding information, but I highly doubt he was involved with the death. You know, the pattern, what we noticed in the past when it came to Caden's first interview, there was backlash, but then there was genuine people slightly confused and trying to work through the information and look at the inconsistencies. And if you did question Caden Pressey, not directly, but in your own opinions and discussions, people from other areas, whether that be on YouTube or Facebook, would come at you and say, oh, because you don't nod your head and because you don't agree 100% with this situation with Caden, it makes you a Stevie Howard supporter. It makes you a Noah Presgrove killer supporter. And it's ridiculous, right? It kind of comes across the same way as in, because Warlight Ref defends himself, then it means he doesn't comply with all the rules, regulations of the case of Noah Presgrave, even though it's not exactly related. And there's other people out there that have done more damage, that are probably more questionable, that have got VIP access here and there, they've not been kicked, and they're still about. How weird, how backwards. Now it says... Let's not act like he killed somebody just because he messed up the details. Ask anyone something that they did a few days ago, they're going to get messed up. You mean mixed up. It does, it does differ from person to person. Some people do have a better memory than others. Anyway, Skippy says, Noah wasn't there on Friday. Mm. So Caden may not have focused that much on that night when retelling his story. But equally... If that's the case, then why did Caden then go into detail about Sunday morning going back to the house with the girls then if Noah wasn't even there, Noah making it back to his own place of living? And whether it be Saturday or Sunday, depending how you look at the timeline from the private interview, when Caden said, oh, hanging out with the girls, stayed at the house, never left, as it was worded that way, watched films, then later went to buy alcohol, why do we need to know any of that when it doesn't involve Noah? You know, based off your reasoning, and I'm not being negative here, I'm just putting it into perspective. So shout out to Skippy. Anyway, Warlight Ref had a good point that Friday may have set in motion the events that transpired over the weekend, but Caden may not be associating Friday in that way since Noah wasn't there. Yet... Friday going into Saturday supposedly were the days of where 40 people were at the party and yet Sunday going into Monday when we thought that's when the 40 people were there as described in the Partners in True Crime interview it's been switched the other way around. So what does that mean? Well it kind of means that the ones who were actually present at the party were more regulars than strangers when the time came for Noah's outcome. Or supposedly. That's what I find interesting. Because the the 40 people present. The great force or presence of strangers at the house. Was a key major factor. As in maybe some of those could have taken out Noah. Maybe because of being strangers. Not understanding one another. Crossed wires. Throwing alcohol into the mix. Doesn't sound like a good combination does it? But. If those strangers and the majority were there a day or two before that, it's not as linkable to the outcome with Noah. Unless there is video footage which shows a set of strangers or so to Noah that are caught doing some incriminating stuff. But that's not been made public. So it's limited, isn't it? It's still good to talk about this, though, what Skippy's getting on about. Uh, what else? I try not to equate my own behaviour to how others react, but I will in this instance. When I was around his age, a traumatic event happened in my life. I could only focus on the event itself. It took years before I was able to see that early events had actually led up to the singular one I remembered. So, sorry to hear that. Sort of like connecting the dots. You don't see the importance of how they connect until later, upon reflection. So, yeah, I understand that. That's all fine. Um, so, yep, yeah, shout out to Skippy. It's one of those things where, you know, 
in the moment, your memory can be fresh, but you might not be able to utilize it properly with everything going on. And then in the future, when you think back, oh, could it have been any different? Could I have done any more? Could I have done any less? You might torture yourself, but at the same time, you might find out that like you can pick up on more details, but it's different for everyone. Nate says, let's not act like Caden killed somebody just because he messed up the details. Well, not once did I say that. I'm trying to figure out why the details differ and the importance behind it. Even if it's by mistake, it still happens and it still needs to be looked into because if you don't, it just gets too confusing. And then what are you supposed to believe? Because there's a, diff there's a big difference between going to sleep close to three in the morning and then going to sleep 20, 30 minutes later, right? There's a big difference between Noah supposedly walking off in between two to three in the morning and then later supposedly walking off at 3.30, unless it's separate events, right? That's what we need to know. Nate, Caden's not a killer at the very worst. He's withholding information. I mean, I don't know. What, have these comments been repeated or something? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's because I'm in, I'm in the... Am I in the comment thread? Oh, boy. I'm actually in the comment thread. I've, I've got so focused in with the comments, I thought we we're still scrolling up. Yeah, we keep going down. Apologies about that. That really confused me. K responds to Jade. Caden Percy isn't just mixing up details, he's intentionally lying, misleading. Do I think like that? No, not at this moment in time. I'd acknowledge that Caden Percy has gone above and beyond and done a lot more publicly up front than what other people have. But obviously, the more you put yourself out there and the more you talk, the higher the chances that something might go wrong at some point and it can backfire. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, Kay says, partners in true crime wanted specific details from Sunday night that would prove Jack could have done it. Caden told them he woke up at 2.40 in the morning. Well, it was actually 2.42, but close enough. His mother initially called him and stated he saw Jack playing beer punk. That's not from what the mother said. The mother called because of the Caden's cousin being taken home safely. But amongst being called, Caden being awoken because of that at 2.42 in the morning, it meant Caden was alert and aware of his surroundings and what he could see around him. And it just so happened that Caden saw Jack playing beer pong at around 2.42, along with Jasmine Milan and Noah Presgrove. So they were still awake and they were still alive. And that was quite a critical piece because Jack said he went to sleep earlier. Clearly he didn't, so it showed he was a liar. That's why it was important. But Kay says, that's significant because partners in true crime wanted Caden to prove Jack was guilty, lying about being asleep. He told them exactly what they wanted to hear, so they'd blame Jack. In the leaked interview, the cops asked the same exact questions, but for completely different reasons. Caden told the cops he woke up at three in the morning from his mum calling and told them he didn't see Jack or anyone else at the time. Caden was basically telling the cops Jack wasn't at the house at three in the morning. He was at the highway killing Noah. Really? Not only did Caden mess up with the time 2.40 to three in the morning, but went from seeing Jack playing beer pong to not seeing him at all. Wow. I might just have to go back over that because as for the timestamp of when Caden woke up at three in the morning, not 2.42, to be honest, I might have to... I might have to look back over that because I thought it was 2.42 still. I thought the 2.42 timestamp was consistent with both interviews, but it was when he went back to sleep that was inconsistent. But in fairness, if he did wake up at three in the morning, I said, it's based enough on what I can remember from that interview. I'd have to look back myself if possible. But, you know, if time was pushed uh, backwards, so later on, three in the morning, waking up, but then going back to sleep wouldn't be at the same time. It would be a bit later on, so then it would make sense as in 3.20. But still, it pushes everything back, meaning all the other events that follow after that, much closer to the time of when 
Noah's death came about and closer to when Jack could have disappeared at some point as well. Interesting. Hmm. In the leaked interview, the cops asked the same questions but different reasons. Caden told the cops woke up at three in the morning because of his mum calling and that he didn't see Jack or anyone else at that time. I don't remember it being worded directly like that. Then again, I'll just have to check it out myself again. What I do remember Noah saying is that when it came to going to sleep or trying to go back to sleep at around 3.20 a.m., Caden said he assumed that Noah was still there. He didn't actually see Noah there. He just assumed, which doesn't sound good at all. So by 3.20 in the morning, there was no guarantee that Noah was alive. No guarantee that Noah was witnessed at the party. Yet in Partners in True Crime, um, close to three in the morning, Caden said that's when he tried going back to sleep and he saw Noah present and alive. But in this leaked interview a month before it, he's saying, I don't remember seeing Noah at the party at that time. Well, a bit later onwards. And around the time of 3.20, what would Noah have been doing, supposedly? Well, the side-by-side, -side, would that have already happened? Supposedly, based off that 2.40 timestamp video of it occurring. The sleeping, well, the shower first and the sleeping debacle. The time frame of that wasn't given. How long would it take? Who knows? But technically, the end point was 3.30, given by Jack, who said that's the time when Noah walked off. How truthful is that timestamp? It's not really changed that much until we heard from Caden's private interview that it was in between 2 in the morning to 3 in the morning when Noah wandered off. Now, Noah could have wandered off, then returned back, then did the side-by-side -side incident, then ended up having a shower, then trying to sleep and that all kicked off, and then eventually walking off to cool off for a bit and not being able to return back. It could still all link, but then... With the timing being pushed backwards, could Caden have seen or heard anything? If you had enough time to fall off to sleep, go into a deep sleep, you're not likely to see or hear things which go on past that point. If you're just about to drop back off to sleep, you know, you just close your eyes for a second, you're still going to be conscious and aware of your senses around you, unless you're a deep sleeper or really drunk, maybe. Anyway, Kay says to Nate, well, Jack Newton has been accused of killing Noah the last 12 months for the very same reasons and his inconsistencies aren't even as bad as Caden's, so it's okay to blame Jack but not Caden. Why? I think if you're going to question one person, you question everyone for that full balance. But would I go as far and say that, you know, Jack's inconsistencies are nowhere near as bad as Caden's? I think that might be a bit too far in my opinion because with what Jack has said with time has been detrimental to the case. And you know why? Because Jack is the only one to make reference and state that Noah passed away four in the morning and it's not really changed since, it's not been challenged since, it's not really been adjusted either. So supposedly now the time of when Noah passed away, when the official report states time of death is unknown and cause of death is a mystery... I think that's pretty serious, don't you? And I don't think it's received enough attention or enough questioning, even despite the videos that I've done about it. And in recent time with Partners in True Crime, the last one done with Ashley Chadwick, Robin Smith, and that pre-recorded interview played at the time from um, when Jack was interviewed, roughly around the same time, Jack Newton, out of nowhere, after a year on, or close to one year on, suddenly brought Logan into the conversation and said, no, she was the last one to see Noah walk away. An event like that is very important because it's a timestamp of when Noah was last seen, where and who by and what time. And over time, it went from supposedly Jack Newton being the last person to see Noah wander off, but then Jasmine Milan was saying it was Avery K 
uh, Avery Combs, the last one to see Noah Wondroff. And then just recently, Jack changed up and said, no, it wasn't me, the last person to see Noah walk away. It was actually Logan. Why does it need to change around so much? That's actually worse than uh, Caden Pressey, if I'll be honest with you. I know we've got to try and be balanced, but one's worse than the other, and I think it's the other way around, in my opinion. And as well, let's not forget Jack Newton in that interview completely ignored the supposed aggressive argument, the pushing and shoving between Noah and Jack before Noah wandered off for good. Right? Why wasn't that acknowledged? It was just ignored by Jack. So the story's changing. New, te- new, new details are being added. Old details are being neglected. Sounds like the narrative has been adjusted for s- certain reasons. An agenda comes across it that way. Hmm. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Nate, because I can see what Jack and Colton are and I can see what Caden is not. Caden is not a killer. Colton has killer eyes. Caden does not. So we're just basing it off appearance. I mean, to be honest, I can do the odd facial expressions and I look like a complete psychopath. Does that mean that I'm the next Ted Bundy or something? Because supposedly... Uh, people say that I look like Ted Bundy. Do I have a bigger crowbar? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Mm, can't just base it all off appearance because looks can be deceiving. Anyway, Caden shows massive sorrow and sympathy. Colton and Jack do not show much. Colton is a psycho. But is he clinically diagnosed as a psychopath? Like with absolute certainty. Because I know when it comes to online, a lot of quirky humans like to either diagnose themselves or others. In honesty, when I, when I do my analysis videos, um, if I do demonstrate that, that's more so because I'm just simply countering cancer and toxic humans. When it comes to a serious situation or a genuine person, I'm not going to be doing the same thing or procedure. Junie, they drink constantly. I find it normal for drinkers. Safia, or should I say, Safia, love it. I think they were there too on Sunday night, meaning JJ Colton, Travis Monson. Do you think it's possible Caden changed his story because the cops and the guys involved are threatening him? Who knows? Jade says, I don't, I mean, all I can say is if Caden felt like he was threatened or scared of the authority, it doesn't quite match up with Caden constantly wanting to, you know, try and be interviewed and help the police and help the case, right? Jade says, I don't think Caden is a killer, but something just doesn't seem right with him. I feel like he's lying about something. Maybe his cousin saw something and he's protecting her or he saw something. Well, from the looks of it, the cousin wouldn't or shouldn't have seen anything because of the timing it all happened. But then again, what time did things happen at? 2.42, the time, was when the cousin was already back at home where they needed to be. So that's probably way before Noah's death and the side-by-side and more, from the looks of it. That was a good comment thread, that, I'll be honest. 1300 hours, 1pm, hmm. Yeah, apologies. Safia says, It's always great catching up with you guys. Such a fun and interesting group. That's good to know. we got Vanessa that says, Great video. Keep being you. So, uh, will do. More videos to come, hopefully. Then you got Denisa Black saying, God said there will nothing unseen that I will not bring to light. we got the dog emoji there. And then what does Nate say? To everyone saying he wasn't hit by a car, please tell me how such severe injuries are possible all at once. Medical professionals said 90% of the injuries happened at the same time. Is that really the case? Huh. I was brutally beaten. Wait. Oh, he was brutally beaten, then hit by a car. And whoever can't see that, I don't know what to tell you. The reason... His legs and arms aren't broken is because they ran over his upper back head area with a crash bar on a truck or or did he fall from a 200 plus feet and if so, how? Uh, hmm. 
I think he might have been hit with a golf club a few times and he was trying to get up and they hit his upper head and back with a truck on purpose. Mark says, you sound like you're pretty close to things. It's like you're right there without naming any names. He would never ask you to do that. I think whoever swung that golf club's going to be the most guilty out of anybody that crosses the line you can't come back from. Bad for everybody, everybody loses. The faster and the more honest people are, the less time they'll do. So I'm hoping somebody comes forward after all this. I mean, the less time they may do, but what would the victims' families think of it? Oh, they might get out, they might be released in the future. What else could they do? Who else could they harm? It's like that with the Dylan Rounds case on Gem. Nate says, I'm from Canada. That's not possible for me to be there. I just have a powerful intuition and empathy. I think the golf club scenario is possible, but I don't think their intention was to kill him. Maybe Jack and Colton both him once and Noah oh hit him once and Noah started seizing and died. Then Colt and Jack freaked out and staged a hit and run with that white truck they sold. It had a push bar that wouldn't get any damage from hitting a deer or person at lower speeds and there is injuries are identical to lower speed hit and run or dragging on gravel with transition onto cement you're in the right place mark says sonny says i believe golf clubs too punched kicked dragged a very brutal beating what um and people were already slapping him mm. mark in my opinion, you're on the right track. However, I will disagree with that comment right off the bat. If you swing a golf club at somebody, you only intend to kill them. Pretty much. I mean, you could swing a golf club in a different direction, but you let go too late and it ends up somehow reaching the person by the side of you. I've seen that on fail videos online. Um, Mark says, you don't do that accidentally, in my opinion. Also, you're forgetting about a lot of players... Why do you think Jasmine Milan was smiling in the picture at 3.41 and announcing that Noah's missing? Why were I and M invited to the party and for what purpose? Are you referring to Isaac Rojas and Mikey Lear? Is it a coincidence that Isaac arrived at the party with a loaded rifle, 12 gauge shotgun, just so happened to be yelling in the direction of Noah? That's incorrect. Um, Isaac was actually talking towards Brylan Sweat, in case you were wondering. Why was Brylan taunting Noah the way he was? In other words, what was the purpose of Brylan smacking Noah in the face and then running away? Well, that's because Noah was asking for it. Noah was begging to be slapped. I heard it with my own ears. But supposedly Brylan may or may not have held something in his hand and may have said something back which probably needs to be analysed at some point. In brackets, that was not part of the drunk slapping game. Do you believe Caden Pressey and or Jack Newton were asleep or more just laying down resting? What about JJ Bumpass, Jack Newton, Travis Monson? Do you believe they were there? Question. Hmm. Now, just randomly as a heads up, a person said that they would give super chats or super stickers if I said JJ bump ass, all I can say is I feel sorry for them because if, I, if you look back to a previous video of that, I think I said it like a hundred times. God damn it, that's going to be bad, isn't it, man? It, was, it actually just indirectly, it just reminds me of the Dylan Rounds case where you had a foul mouth individual and then Badger Life said for every comment that that foul mouth individual leaves, I'll give a super chat. It got exhausting at one point. <laughs> Shout out to Badger. Nate says, I believe Caden, but I think everyone else you mentioned is 100% guilty. Caden wasn't involved, but he knew and he knows he's been caught in multiple lies. He's caught up in this either way. In my opinion, DeJoy will not buy a sleeping defense. Nate says, I think he'll tell all eventually. And Nate responds, uh, adds on, uh, no, they won't. And I don't either, it's suspicious. And for Caden seeing there's comments, just tell the truth already. No, I didn't deserve this. Okay, so let's scroll up a little bit more. So we've got this comment here 14 hours ago by Divine Visions Crime Readings. And we'll just click view more and see what's mentioned here. They say, wow, Andrew, 
So we're on first term names now, so we can see this is a serious situation, also known as Warlight Raph. Wow, Andrew, Vanessa sent you those screenshots. That's with an S, means more than one. Vanessa did not send me multiple screenshots. In terms of the YouTube live chat, public chat specifically, that's what I got myself from my point of view, specifically the YouTube screenshots, okay? So let's make that very clear. It wasn't multiple screenshots, it was one, uno. Divine says, that was a private conversation between Stephanie Bacon and Vanessa before she realised Vanessa is a scammer. So what this confirms by Divine is that the conversation between Stephanie and Vanessa was true, was real and not fake, as some people may have claimed or had their suspicions about. So that's very eye-opening. But furthermore, to say that, yeah, but that conversation took place before Stephanie knew who Vanessa was, whether it happened before or if it happened afterwards, does it change what's happened or what was said? It sounds as minimising as um, who? What would be a good example of minimalization on the spot? Um, oh, I, can't, I can't think on the spot. It's kind of annoying that. Oh, yeah, I thought of one. So when Divine says, yeah, that conversation took place before Stephanie knew who Vanessa was when talking about me, labelling me as an attention seeker possibly can be interpreted as a narcissist, which may be an opinion, but still can be damaging towards one's credibility. <clears throat> one's credibility. So by saying that, yeah, but that happened before all the other conflict with Vanessa, it doesn't matter if it happened before or afterwards, it still happened, it was still said, it's the same way as minimising with the mindset of Brooke Bounds Carter that threatened Noah Presgrove's family and was going on about, you know, if you keep pushing and pushing Stevie Howard and when she's, when she's got nothing left to lose, then we'll retaliate back and we'll reveal things either about Noah's family or Noah himself, which the family do not want to hear about or do not want to be made public. That's like a, a really direct, specific threat and you know what Brooke Bounds Carter's response to that was, as we saw documented on YouTube, was, well, I apologised anyway. And that was in the past. Oh, because it's in the past, it can be excused. It still happened and it was still said. So the act of trying to minimalise, downplay it now as a form of backtracking or what, I don't know, it's just, mm, it's unfortunate. Anyway to broadcast a private conversation and call out one of your subscribers for having an opinion is pretty low. Well, there's a difference between an opinion and a fact. And the fact is that Warlight Raph is not an attention seeker nor a narcissist. And whilst that may come across as rich, coming from me of all people, there are several witnesses that can back it up in terms of being a normal person and none of the negative traits. There are high-end channels, established people that have known me for a bit of time who know, you know, how I am on YouTube. So, you know, if there is a bit of a mob mentality at times with pitchforks, it can be countered by the purity and the naturalness of longer time viewers and loyal viewers as well that have stuck around since 2020 onwards from the Kenny Beach case. And there might even be the odd person even before 2020 that is still watching my videos. Shout out to them, right? Anyway, anything else to mention? Yeah, it's interesting how Divine says sharing that private conversation is, a, is very low. It's bad of you, Warlike Ref, to do that. Right but it's perfectly okay for other people to leak conversations with key people within the case and then share it on Facebook and everybody claps their hands and says, oh, look, we've got some new juicy details now to look at. It appears to be one rule for one, one rule for the other. You know, if we're going to talk about balance, if I'm going to be called out for what I've done, okay, but you should be calling out everybody else out there that has decided to leak the conversations between Jack Newton or Caden Pressey or Isaac or 
you know, whoever else, you know, Stevie Howard, Sarah Long, whatever. And those people that have been spies going into other groups out there, even if it's for the right reasons, it's still sneaky behaviour, fighting dirty in a way. Oh, but that, that's fine, that's okay. Just seems a little bit one-sided, if I'll be honest with you. But let's just continue. Vanessa is doing this to cause division, and you've taken the bait. Stephanie is real. I talk with her daily, not fake, unsubbed. Well, you do what you need to do, and within a week or two time, the channel will continue onwards, and maybe new people may come along the way. It's under control here. But for Divine to say that Warlight Ref took the bait like some kind of vulnerable cretin is a big, you know, mis mis misunderstanding and, uh, what do you call it, mis underestimating or so. Because at the end of the day, I've been doing this a lot longer than what most other people have been, okay? I've been doing it a lot consistently than what most people have been doing, right? From 2020, with everything I came across and the darkness, from 2022 to 2023, with all the bad stuff that happened there, even being put on a Paramount Plus documentary without consent, as well my footage, and it being edited to make me look bad, having to deal with that and many other things, I think I've handled it rather well, considering... I mean, if you don't upload that often, and you're not that consistent, and you're not that established, and you're not that big, well, you're not going to be dealing with the same issues. It differs from person to person. There are different levels when it comes to YouTube and being a creator. So each person has their own issues, some bigger than others. It depends how big you are yourself as a channel. So there's that to acknowledge. Now, for Vanessa to supposedly cause division I understand what Divine is getting at. Divide and conquer. Same thing that happened in the Dylan Brown's case. It caused a lot of trouble. Everything imploded on itself. And yet, here we are on my channel. Still standing. People still present. Still ongoing. Obviously, wasn't that big of an issue. And in terms of multiple perspectives... In terms of balance, it's looking at it from all sides and all humans within the case or just within the community. Not everybody likes that, but that's what balance is. Taking the time to look through the comments, the understandings, counterpoints, original points and whatnot along the way. Hmm. So I think for Divine to say that Warlike Ref took the bait is a very impetuous, egocentric line to come out with. Hmm. Anything else? To make reference that Stephanie is not fake, I didn't directly say that she was a fake, so I don't know why Divine would have to bring being fake up or not in the first place if you're confident that they're real. If they're real, then there's no need to question whether they're fake or not, nor is there a need to bring it up when I did not mention it myself. So does that highlight a little bit of um, doubt? I mean, in terms of the video that I did, I mentioned the word fake, but not as in Stephanie, the real person, is a fake. Nope, not at all. I was saying that maybe, indirectly stating it, that a screenshot or a comment from either YouTube or elsewhere, could be fake. But I guess humans didn't understand me. It is what it is. But let's see what the responses are. And whether, you know, if people want to put the video on mute or skip onwards, you know, once the live premiere's ended, you can always do so. If you don't want to listen to this part of the video, you can always fast forward onwards. But you can't obviously join a live premiere because it's live. But... This individual, called Vanessa Baby, which I'm sure people will get triggered just because I did a different voice tone there. Whatever. Vanessa says, bye Felicia. I have no clue what that line means, to be honest. I hear it a lot. I don't know. Not true at all. Scammer based on lies. I can back up that I am not a scammer. You are upset because you guys blocked me from my own group chat and didn't let me speak. I wasn't even online when this went on. Raf took time to let me speak, and second, how odd people 
who killed Noah Presgrove are allowed to talk and defend themselves. Me personally, if I was typing this up, I would reword it to the supposed suspects or the people of interest that could be responsible for Noah's death is still allowed to defend themselves. Hmm? But you can understand, one rule for one, one, one rule for another. But the person who is being accused of lies is not allowed to go and gets blocked within minutes. It's a low blow. Then I get told, poor Vanessa, you asked for this. Back away from the case. I won't be silenced. And to be honest, who cares if you're his subscriber? You're a fake. And no wonder you always sick bad karma. Raf needs real people, not flakes. All right. Sorry that you're hurting over the truth being exposed. I am the liar and scammer question. So what does that make you, Amy and Stephanie? Two-faced, fake ass, beep. And that's not coming from my mouth. That's what Vanessa has to say. Also, wow, Sharai, big deal if you unsub. You and your friends were in my group chat and I made Stephanie admin and she kicked me out of my own group and blocked me. People who hurt Noah are allowed to defend themselves, yet I was not able to provide proof and clear my name. Raf did allow it, and he knows, I'm honest, y'all are mad because I'm supposed to be a scammer, yet I am the only one showing proof and not fake like you backstabbing liars. To threaten to unsub because that woman got exposed for the liar she is. Oh, Raf didn't make a video to insult me or call me fake. Did that hurt? Try being real. I worked non-stop on Noah's case. I was even threatened. Have proof. Poor Vanessa, she asked for it. Back off this case. Easy to block from every single thing. Yet you talk about scams. and People hurt Noah, yet you allow them to defend themselves. And even Dina Rose, who gets bashed for saying she's seen a video, yet she is still allowed in the group. It is a little bit odd, that one. I guess me having people come to me with information and helping with info was too much whilst you ladies sat on your arse and just googled a few things. Enjoy being a fake. And then shout out to Hardy Boys because they've um, supported the channel in recent times. So I just wanted to say that. Hardy says, what do you mean, Vanessa? You made Stephanie admin of what group? How could you even do that? Please explain how your image is associated with puppy scams and your mugshot etc go ahead now is your chance to clear your name do you see how simple this is regardless of how the conversation goes hardy boys is just simply allowing the other person to explain themselves whether they agree or not so at least in this situation hardy boys is setting a good example of appropriate behavior in somewhat of a balanced uh, patient way some face palms are used, though. The warlike ref ones. <laughs> Vanessa says it was a group chat on Facebook, basically. Vanessa, second, the name on the post made is different than mine, not even my date of birth. Hardy says, explain then Carla Tabor why you tried to scam Michael into starting a GoFundMe to tune of $80,000 but when he said the money would go straight to Noah's mother, you lost interest. This is the claim they are making about you. In terms of the name Michael, is that to do with Michael Faze Cass or something? Vanessa says, I never once scammed Michael. I have screenshots. Michael wanted to start it for Casey, Noah's mom. Not me. I was helping spread the word. Vanessa says, why the hell would I make a GoFundMe? The only thing I suggested was for them to send her flowers, and they did to her grandmother. Michael said he wanted to make the GoFundMe. Again, I have proof. So, in your situation, Vanessa, you feel like all the doors have closed, so you can't actually, you know, prove your supposed innocence. So, Really, the next best thing you can do, within reason, and providing it's above board, would be to just simply upload it to your own channel, because you clearly have a channel, because you're commenting right now. Show screenshots or whatnot, providing it's within reason, so nothing escalates. Because it's like with the Dylan Rounds case, I'm just talking in general. You had Joy Perry typing in capital letters like Dina Rose, stating a lot, stating there's evidence and this and that, and then when asked, 
do you have it? They said, no, 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 um, passed it on to someone. Oh, I deleted it now, so I don't have it anymore. Well, that's not exactly helpful, is it? But in a situation where someone may have evidence or proof, receipts, and, you, and it's possible within reason to upload or show publicly, you know, have your own platform, have your own channel, and then you'll do it that way. And, you know, Vanessa, if you choose to do so, then you can. Then you've got possible visual proof or possible counterpoints, which then people can read and see. Not everyone may agree, but it's just another layer behind it instead of it being all one-sided. Anyway, Hardy says, Okay, and thank you for answering. I'm just giving you the chance to explain and defend yourself. I hope you can understand everyone's concern. It's difficult to know what to believe. Fair point. Thank you for explaining your side. You were saying the idea for the GoFundMe came from Michael, not yourself. The real concern is when a GoFundMe is talked about, it is important to find out whose idea it is. Name calling is expected in groups. GoFundMe campaigns are not allowed in most groups. Oh. Share your proof with Ref specifically about the GoFundMe. That is the main concern. I mean, if the proof was shared onto me, then I had to share it myself. I don't think it's as natural. It, it should come directly from Vanessa herself. Because if, for some reason, I was supposed to be the messenger, all that does, and that's not to sound too rude, but it would probably tarnish me. But more importantly, it would then make people create weird conspiracy theories and say, oh, look, Vanessa getting Ref to do all the dirty work, and it'll just add ammunition to other people's loadout so then they can throw it back into the fire and it'll just get very spasmodic, really. At the end of the day, if Vanessa has to defend herself, then she should defend herself because when it starts being passed on to other people, um, it's not directly from the horse's mouth and it needs to be. I'm not saying that Vanessa is a horse. Well, I don't think she is. But, <laughs> but you know, if you're going to defend yourself, then, you know, you might as well do it yourself. Anyway, whatever completely I would be the same way but at least let someone talk they block me Michael is so messed up I mean if we're talking about Michael face Kaz at least how he's been towards me a good individual not caused me any problems or trouble so I appreciate that but you know Vanessa has supposedly different experiences he is the one who said the GoFundMe never in my life did I receive nor would want a single penny on Noah's case for God's sake just want his case resolved and was helping them every day him and Justin. I have proof of everything, screenshots saved, I can send to anyone, heck my phone and bank account too, and the information of the girl who they accused me of being to. I have a, what, DL? What does that mean? Can't make that up. I guess I was no longer needed. I mentioned we should send flowers to Noah's mom, as we did for his grandma. I was told no because she was in rehab in California. I have proof I was told this by Rachel Biffel, Bifel. Um, her best friend, Michael, told me he was talking to Noah's mum. She was leaving the rehab to come back home. First, he mentioned money for her. Then he wanted to raise money for a house for her with the condition to get sober. Got proof. Hardy says, just trying to figure out who to believe. Michael commented, she wanted me to start a fundraiser for Noah's mum, which I agreed to. However, once I said I was going to have the money go straight to her, didn't seem like she had interest in it. She asked me to not do it because she felt she might use again and didn't think she should have money right now. I'd still like to do in the future for Noah's mum, but I don't want to be in control of it and I don't think anyone else should be, in quotes. And last but not least, I only told ever suggested some flowers he wanted to set GoFundMe to give her money or GoFundMe to buy a house he even sent me messages between him and Noah's mum. I got proof too. Well, it gets to that point where you've got a lot of proof. You've got a platform such as YouTube. You've got your own channel. Now's the opportunity to put it out there within reason. And that, you know, some people will like to throw in some little counterpoints and little attacks on to me and say, oh, you're endorsing Vanessa now. I'm just simply stating some common sense. But if a person keeps going on about, I've got proof, I've got evidence, well, back it up. Because like when it comes to Dina Rose, they've completely failed, haven't they? So let's be balanced. If people are going to go after Vanessa because, oh, bad person done bad things and, you know, where's your evidence, where's your evidence? And yet Vanessa may not have a chance to actually show that evidence at the moment. Well, then 
can we direct the same level of energy, positive or negative, towards Dina Rose then, who says a lot, gets a lot of hype up about the case and a lot of false hopes, and says that there's evidence and that there's this and that, but never shows or backs it up, right? Let's split it 50-50, just for that balance, that's all. Mark, shooting animals randomly. So now we're returning back to the no Presgrove case specifically. The Caden Pressey uh, scenario with Jack Newton, no Presgrove, Isaac Rojas, Braille and Sweat, when they went out driving in the afternoon of Sunday before it was getting dark, shooting at animals. And Mark says, aren't those signs of a serial killer? I mean, I'm crazy. I mean, am I crazy or does that seem bizarre? Just cruising around shooting at animals randomly? Animals have rights in Florida. You go to jail doing that here. Well, that's good to know. But I guess there's states in America where you can just shoot anything or everyone. Jade, I thought about that too, but it's Oklahoma. Junie, they're used to it. One thing I can admit I like about California. I don't think anybody in Oklahoma drives around and shoots at animals randomly. Mm, maybe some will whether they're drunk or messing about. I mean, you're dealing with younger people thinking, oh, it's all fine without any consequences, even though, you know, the animals can be in danger. I don't know if any are endangered, though, but that's another thing. What if they're wounded? Do they leave them to die slow and suffer? It really wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. How big of an animal do they kill as well? Dogs, cats, raccoons? I mean, what's the limit on how big of an animal they shoot, or do they just shoot anything, whether it kills them or not? I would never think normal people in Oklahoma beyond shooting animals within regulations take part in that type of behaviour. Seems very isolated to kill and torture animals randomly. Who knows? I mean, if you're killing, like hunting for survival, pure survival, I kind of understand that. If it's trophy hunting, uh, not so much. If it's like shooting to protect maybe livestock or some kind of plants, you know, important resources, I kind of understand that. I guess there's exceptions. Mark, only this group. Uh, Jade, hunting is very popular in the South. Those kids probably just looked at it as hunting, but not done properly. That's exactly what I said. I'm from California. One of the only things I like about California is there's pretty much no hunting. Californians hate hunting. That's good. As soon as I heard they were shooting animals, I was mad. They probably just looked at it as hunting witches. Very common. Oh, not hunting witches. There was no comma there. You mean hunting in which it's common. <laughs> I thought you meant killing <laughs> I thought you meant killing witches? Oh my god. Amanda, that speaks to a total unfeeling psycho mind. Normal people just do not do things like that. You're quite correct. Right. It should make hunting is different than killing randomly. Millions of people hunt within regulation. I want to give the young the benefit of the doubt as well. It's just tough. I think what doesn't help is the fact that you've got the dove hunt. And whilst that might be only certain animals like birds still hunting, hunting uh, nearby. And who knows who attended the dove hunt and then went to the party, right? I mean, when you think about it, it depends how many people actually attended the dove hunt because if Caden was saying that Friday, Saturday was when the 40 people were present, not the Sunday, does that have any implications with the dove hunt or any links? I wonder. Skeptical says, in the True Crime Partners in Crime, Partners in True Crime interview, Caden mentioned, and I'm paraphrasing, that he only wanted to talk about the events from Saturday or Sunday, which raises questions about his involvement on Friday. Exactly. And I, maybe I didn't word it the correct way at the time, but I really went on about it at the time of that interview and not everybody saw eye to eye with me. And here we are. He stated that he called Jack on a Saturday to inquire about his plans, to which Jack replied that they were having a party and invited Caden to attend. This raises the question, why would Jack need to invite Caden to the party on Saturday if Caden had already been present on a Friday? Exactly. I caught that and was wondering some things. Wasn't Jack there on Friday, so they would have talked about returning on Saturday or so? Rebecca? Hmm... See, this is what this is what's needed. This focus, this conversation, it's good to see. George Choden, please pay attention to the strategic leak of Caden's two hour long Oklahoma Highway Patrol interview via what? Is that Justin Roy? M K Mind Control E P versus S C etc. Screw all the 
Facebook readings, obstruction interference previously warned, so the next step was hacked. Not kidding, receipts. It's not exactly the best sentence structuring from what I've seen. Julie, 12 p.m. Uh huh. Yeah, apologies about that. Yeah, correct. Rebecca, I liked you, innocent, but I enjoy naughty videos too. I thought it was all in good fun. That's good to know. So, yes, shout out to Rebecca. Rebecca, yes. Shout out to Glenn, long time viewer, good example, good person. No, mind is in the gutter, just means that they've got a dirty mind. Right, okay. They can both be flirty and think you are doing this for attention. It's not nice to say you can do it for attention as they bait you, but both can exist at the same time. Okay, and then what's the last few responses? Oh no, fell asleep halfway through. So sorry, just finished watching amazing video as usual. Now I apologise for making your next with the bat. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I um, must have been caught off guard. Uh, let me just adjust my voice. Oh no, fell asleep halfway through. So sorry, just finished watching. Amazing video as usual. Now I apologise for marking your necks with the belt, but it was necessary to control you. I think I need to restrain you, <laughs> you more often, as it will be easier to straddle you, so I can hear those big noises, and I can tie you up. I need to stop falling asleep. Yes, you do, Sharon. You need to stop falling asleep. Uh, ignore my comment, but he sends his list. Ooh, funny you mention Santa's naughty list. I have a naughty Christmas outfit. I think I do need a consultation. I have pain in a few places that only you can make better. But don't break my zip this time. I mean, to be honest, I think breaking a zip is better than it getting jammed. Ah, oh, don't worry. I have ways of going very slow for maximum results. Yeah, right, Sharon. It took you two hours to reply to my comment. Not exactly great customer service, is it? Hmm? And Sharon says, oh, I apologise, Dr. Raff. I can't help it if you were having doctor-like thoughts that needed immediate responses. What? what well, uh, excuse me, Sharon. It doesn't explain why you were two hours late, does it? Hmm? Did you get stuck somewhere? Did the door jam on itself? Were you too busy trimming the bushes in the backyard? Hmm? Or, uh, oh, Sharon, you didn't have to. You were baking more muffins. Is that why you were busy? You were fixing up a recipe. You stuffed yourself the night before with a cheesecake. Now you thought, oh, you make some muffins. Wow, you got a massive meal prepared. Very good, very good. No? No? Oh. Too hopeful, too much wishful thinking. Never mind, by the side of me, I've got those scented nuts. Not exactly going to fill me up, but it fills the atmosphere with some hope, doesn't it? Hmm. Anyway, that appears to be it. So, once again, Sharon managed to make an appearance in these videos. Very popular person. Wow. Maybe someday, Sharon, I'll be asking for your autograph. Wow. Now... I think that seems to be it for that. So hopefully you found this video of some use. I just wanted to spread awareness so you're aware of what's up, what's happened, and if I slow down with videos, it's not because I've been silenced or I've been, you know, attacked in that way like maybe other people have. It's just that there's only so much you can cover. And if you are kicked aside, then there you go. But there are still things to cover. So... Whilst I might think outside of the box, that can have its own benefits too. So whatever happens elsewhere happens and just still continue on, okay? And um, was there anything else that I needed to acknowledge? I guess if you had any comments or thoughts, you can leave them down below under this video in the comment section. You'll also find a pinned comment by me at the top with additional links if you do want to support this channel in different ways. I symbol up there to catch the recent videos you've missed out on. And that's pretty much it. If you want to like the video, that'd be appreciated. If you want to share it, if you want to, but to Facebook, maybe not a good idea, as we know. It might only make unnecessary things, but I had to provide an update here. This is my channel. This is my coverage. 
I should be able to give updates and I should be able to defend myself, just like how anyone else can. But the themes of what I've noticed in recent time, one rule for one, one rule for others, um, maybe a little bit of double standards. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, whenever that is. Goodbye, good night for now.